Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is more so for the beginning prepper and for those preppers that are on a budget than for advanced preppers because I think that people that have been prepping for a long time probably know the information that I'm about to put out. But I want to show you that if you're on a budget and if you're a beginning prepper and you're just starting, in my opinion, all right, this is my opinion, this is the best food that you can store and you should store the most of and I'm gonna tell you why first of all it is still very cheap this pasta that I purchased right here this is pretty expensive pasta to tell you the truth it comes from Italy and it's all organic but it's still only about a dollar and 25 cents a pound when you buy it in bulk so the first thing you want to do is you want to buy in bulk or buy things that are on sale now, you can go and get pasta at the store, get the store brand name or something like that for about a dollar per pound. Sometimes you can catch them on sale for less than a dollar a pound. But I believe that for the quality of this pasta, a dollar and 25 cents a pound is a great deal. Now, this is what I would call a calorie maintenance food, meaning that you're going to get most of your calories from this type of food not necessarily all of your protein and fats that you need but this is going to maintain your caloric needs for the day then you would go ahead and supplement what you eat of this every day with something else like a can of chicken a can of spam if you like spam that is but this right here ladies and gentlemen is 80 servings but i don't look at it as 80 servings for survival i look at it as eight days of food this is eight days of food for a dollar and 25 cents a day plus whatever you supplement it with in my opinion that is great now why do i say that this is the best bang for your buck when it comes to prepping calories for long term many preppers like rice right i love rice but take a look at the nutritional information so here per serving you have 210 calories there's 80 servings in this that means that eight days worth of this food you've got 1660 calories per day from this pasta but what i think is the most important is take a look at the protein you've got seven grams of protein per serving if you eat eight servings a day which is what would equal to 1660 calories you've got eight times seven that's 56 grams of protein that is a great amount of protein. It definitely trumps rice when it comes to protein. And I think that it's pretty comparative in price as far as what you're getting for calories and absolutely much better than what you're getting for protein. Now, for those of you that are starting to prep, there's many different ways to put this away for long term where it's going to last you 25 years or more. I'm going to show you the simplest way that you can use where you don't need any special tools. You just need to get a couple of things, one of which is oxygen absorbers. Now, you can get oxygen absorbers like these, these 50cc oxygen absorbers, for as little as about six and a half, seven cents per if you buy them in bulk. So if you buy a bag of 100 or so, you're going to probably pay about six, seven dollars. I get mine on Amazon. Now, the next thing that you're going to do to make it as simple as possible is you're going to need some jars and yes jars are an expense each jar depending on where you get them can go anywhere from a dollar per jar all the way up to like two dollars per jar depending where you get them i've already been stocked up on these so i actually got a pretty good deal on these last year when i purchased them but i'm trying to show you the simplest way to do it where you don't need any tools or really anything special and then of course you don't really need this but to make your life a little easier as you're doing this, you're going to need a funnel. And I'm also going to use a cup to put my pasta in there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is such a simple task that this is something that you can actually get your kids involved in. You know, go ahead and give them the cup measuring cup and tell them, hey, start putting pasta in there until it gets to this line right here. And then once you're done, get to the next one. Like I said, this, in my opinion, is the easiest way to put away this food right here, which I consider to be the best bang for your buck when it comes to calories and when it comes to protein, even more so, in my opinion, than rice is. And as you can see, it's not rocket science. Anybody can do this. 
And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Once we finish processing this, not really processing it, but putting it away, this is going to be good for 25 years, if not more. As long as you store it in a temperature controlled room that doesn't get too hot, make sure that when you store these, you don't have any direct sunlight hitting them. It doesn't get very much easier than this. Now, if you want to, for every one of these jars of pasta that you put away, put away two cans of meat and one can of vegetables. So two cans of meat, one can of vegetables per jar should feed two people for one day. I'm not going to bore you to death by filling up the rest of the jars. I'm about two-thirds of the way done with this bag. So I'm assuming it's going to take me about another three to four jars to finish putting that bag away for long term. Now, for those of you that are new to prepping, what's going to make this food last as long as it will last when you put it in storage is really your oxygen absorbers. Your oxygen absorbers are going to evacuate whatever oxygen there is in the air trapped inside of the jars. The rule of thumbs is that for every quart, you use 100 cc's of oxygen absorber. In this case, I feel that I can get away with using only 50 cc, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. The reason that I say that you can use 150 cc oxygen absorber and get away with it is because there's, in my opinion, about only a half of a quart of air in there after you take away the volume that these noodles make up. However, I would rather be safe than sorry, like I said before, so I'm going to go ahead and place two 50 cc oxygen absorbers in these, and I'm going to have my lids ready to go. Right, my lids are right here. They're ready to go because once you open your container up that's storing your oxygen absorbers, you want to make sure that you use them in a hurry. That way, they don't lose any of their efficacy. And as you can see, I only have 10 left in my jar, so I'm going to go ahead and close these up first before I go ahead and open up my other jar that I have and finish this one off. So very simple, ladies and gentlemen. All you want to do is just make sure that you put your lids on nice and straight. You don't want them to be off center really because you want them to go ahead and create a good seal. Nothing really special about this. The only difference that you're going to do when you're tightening these lids compared to when you tighten lids when you are actually pressure canning is that when you pressure can, you don't want to tighten your lids really, really tight. But when you dry can, and that's what this is considered, this is considered dry canning, you want to put your lids on there nice and tight to make sure that that seal stays. Now, over time, you will see that the lid will pop down because it will create a negative vacuum inside of the jar. Now, some of you may be asking, AP, shouldn't you vacuum seal these with the food saver and the food saver attachment? You can do that, and it's not going to hurt anything. However, I've found over time that the oxygen absorber does a good enough job to where you don't have to vacuum seal these when you are dry canning. Now, take a look at this. This is the jar where I store my excess O2 absorbers. And what I mean by that the O2 absorbers do a good enough jar to keep a seal on there is this. Check this out. First of all, you see that? I did not vacuum seal these. It's just the oxygen absorber evacuating the oxygen in the air that's inside the jar. And it creates a seal on its own. Now listen to this. These are nice and tight. I hope you heard that little hiss. That's proof that these oxygen absorbers are doing their job. And they're going to do the same thing inside of that jar as well. Whenever I use my oxygen absorbers, if I have more left in my jar, I make sure to close it up really quick and they'll be good for your next use. Now all we have to do our last one. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, I know that times are tough, but you can prep. You can still prep on the cheap. I know that a lot of the preps that I, that I show you all are sometimes more expensive preps, sometimes cheaper preps, but the fact of the matter is this. This is an outstanding prep for you to put away. It'll last years, literally years. It'll feed you calories that you need, a good amount of protein, and it is still very reasonably priced. It's still affordable. So go out there and prep. This is not the only way that you can put these away. 
you can use food saver bags and put them away doing the same thing putting an oxygen absorber in there however you would have to store it in a place where maybe rodents couldn't get to it and where they won't get banged around where the side of the bag can get punctured right because then that would take away the efficacy of your oxygen absorber letting air in and out pretty much making it a moot point of you having ever put an oxygen absorber in there go out there and prep today Right here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Like I said earlier, you go ahead and add a can or two cans of meat and one can of vegetables with each of these, and you will survive. It may not be the tastiest thing in the world, just eating pasta by itself, but you will survive. So if you're of low means, this is a great way to put away some preps. Having said that, I really do hope that you got something out of this. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I am out. Hello, hello, everyone. I have here today in order to ask you one simple question. All the crazy things going on in the world, if something bad happens, if something does not go your way, and it becomes too much to take, tell me, what are you going to do? Nutrient survival isn't just survival food. It's special ops grade. Built to the nutritional standards of the U.S. Special Ops and packed with 40 essential nutrients. Formulated to sustain energy, sharpen focus, and keep you and your family thriving during any emergency. Real food, real ingredients. Oh, and a 25-year shelf life. Our meals will kick your taste buds in the mouth and have them coming back for dessert. Yeah, we've got that too. So whether you're digging in or bugging out, you don't just survive an emergency situation, you thrive in it. Nutrient Survival. Feed your freedom.